Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Thank you for tuning into another Super Tease video. And with this one, I will be covering everything you need to know about the Balanced Druid when it comes to PvP in Dragonflight. By the end of this video, you're going to have an excellent idea of what you need to be doing in PvP in order to have success. I have been having the most fun with this specialization. It is stupendous i really love the new starfall gameplay focused on area of effect damage there's so many entertaining talents uh and but in today's video we're going to be talking about stats we're going to be talking about gear we're going to be talking about talents we're going to be talking about play style we're going to be running through some gameplay as well to really get all of our bases covered so the main thing with balance that you're going to need to realize is that it's not so much heavily based around star surge although there are builds if you want to play and wish to play the shadowlands play style there are builds for that i have been really enjoying this version of balanced Druid, though it's one that i'm going to be sticking with uh, and going to be talking you through uh, so the main components that are really important about these talents uh, for balanced Druid is this talent in particular the star weaver so with this talent we want to always be using our astro power on starfall because starfall will have a 40 percent chance to make star surge free whereas star surge will only be 20 percent when we get a free star surge that one also has a chance to make our starfall free so we can get a bit of a chain reaction of this astral power expenditure this is going to help our damage output help us maintain moonkin aura and help us keep starfall rolling which is going to have great synergies with the honor talent starburst which is going to be calling bombs onto the ground that we can pick up and run into our enemies it's so much fun to do that just running around the map trying to proc star surges and starfalls back to back picking up these bombs and running them into people super fun uh gameplay wise the next major important talent we're going to be talking about for balance Druid is the orbital strike you've probably seen if you've watched any Balanced Druid gameplay, these kind of green lines that go down on the ground, and you're like, what is that? This is what that is. This talent converts our incarnation into it, which makes it a 60 second less cooldown, which is the most important component of this talent but we'll also just shoot a laser beam at our target that hits pretty hard. Like it's a lot harder than 17K on the tool to like 70 to sometimes 100K damage and it will apply stellar flare to all targets. So you really wanna be hitting as many things as you can because stellar flare will then turn into an engine to fuel you astro power, which then fuels our star weaver, which then fuels our star burst. And you can see how it starts uh, to feed into itself. The next new thing that you're gonna to need to really be paying attention to when it comes to balance druid is the wild mushroom. We're gonna be able to explore load mushrooms beneath a target which will snare them and with the talent apply a, a dot effect to them so really important for this talent over here which is the waning twilight when you have three periodic effects on your target they take eight percent more damage so i like using the stellar flare from orbital strike during my burst window and then after that stellar flare has faded i will chain it into a wild mushroom uh, and then whenever i want to burst i will activate a wild mushroom onto the target with two dots moonfire and sunfire in order to get a huge amount of damage now we've got a couple of unused astral power generations in our talents. So we've got astral communion and we've got fury of a loon. I would generally tell you to be using these during um, orbital strike because this is when we're going to be generating the most amount of astral power and just pumping out the most amount of damage. And then immediately a minute later, and you can see that they line up pretty effectively, right? One minute cooldown, one minute cooldown, and our solar beam is one minute cooldown. So solar beam the healer, drop our orbital strike, drop our communion, drop our fury of a loon. We're in a huge astral power generation, a huge expenditure share. Of damage then the next time we move into a solar beam we can astral communion and fury of the Illune just with an a normal um, eclipse activation we've got a lot of healing and utility options available onto the druid side with nature's vigil and heart of the wild i like using these cooldowns at the start of a fight pretty much as my first global cooldown so i don't need to worry about activating them after the fact because they work much better as a buffer for damage than trying to recover from damage so nature's vigil is just going to convert some of our damage into healing to our allies and heart of the wild is going to increase increase our healing by 30% and reduce mana cost so we can spam out um, spells much more readily without having to worry about going out of mana. So really nice little kind of buffer combination. And then, of course, Innervate, which you're going to pretty much just be pressing on cooldown for your healer. I will have this talent code uh, linked down in the description below um, because there's not really a lot to talk about in terms of specifics for it. Mass Entanglement for Solar Beam, really important utility for rooting melee attackers and demon warlock pets and stuff like that. I like Bash generally more than Incap. Really depends on the classes you're playing with. I'm thinking that Incap Roar is probably only going to ever be taken against Rogue Mage, and this is to stop them from opening on to you know, the target they want to open on from stealth and just kind of an instant 
would cast Peel. But other than that, Bash probably would also work. Um, but this is the only situation where I could see that really significantly being changed. You want to get one point in Well Honed Instincts so that we can get the procced Frenzied Regen as a recovery because defense for Boomkin is definitely um, where you're lacking. I have considered shifting some talents um, around something like Improved Bark Skin and Verdant Heart and maybe going after Ursine Vigor. The main reason for this is because stamina is so high. 10% increased health when we shift into Bear is actually a tremendous amount of health. So I was thinking about flipping these two points around. You want to experiment with those. Um, these two up here, I definitely think, have some variability in terms of uh, where they should go. Uh, but the fact that this increases all healing you receive by 20%, it was the main reason I was leaning to it, but if you're by yourself, Ursine Vigor is going to, to be better in those situations. Uh, generally, sadly, we've got to drop Hibernate. It's too many talent points to be able to get this, and it's really tough to get Deekers. Um, although there are some times against Shaman specifically where this feels like you really need to get it, it's really tough. You have to give up a huge amount, so I just opt not getting Reju, Swiftman, or Remove Corruption. It's going to save you a lot of keybinds, and it, it's just a big sacrifice with how squishy you are to be able to go out of the way to be able to get this, unfortunately. If you're in Battleground scenario, you would want to get Sunfire Applies AoE. In Arena, I wouldn't recommend it um, because what's going to happen is Orbit Breaker, which is every 30th shooting star, is going to proc a full moon. This AoE dot is just going to proc it on a pet, and you really don't want it to proc on a pet. Um, even taking Twin Moons can actually be detrimental uh, in PvP sometimes because you, you don't want it to proc on a pet. Um, I've been thinking about debating whether or not I should drop this against pet comp specifically. Unfortunately, Power of Goldrin is not doing enough damage. Even with this build where I'm getting star surges off, it's just doing like 1% or 2% of the damage overall, so I've opted to not take it. I have seen Dennis in the Dreams doing really good damage in Battlegrounds, but not too great in Arena, so I haven't been playing it personally. Full Moon seems impossible to cast. These talents focused around Wrath and Starfire. Wrath and Starfire are just pathetically weak, so unfortunately these talents, I'm not really taking too much... <clears throat> to go for but that's my thought process here with the talent tree um, and what I want to be taking I, I love taking starburst every time Mukinor every time thorns into melee attackers and I'll switch thorns into deep root, roots when there's no melee attacker on the team and that's kind of the general game plan um, for myself when I'm playing balance druid precognition can also be good into double spell caster with lots of counter spells because you fake it it's going to give you a really nice benefit or high winds into a lot of self-healing classes um, can be decent as well for a flip on this talent but this is basically the only talent on the honor ones that i'm flipping around now when we talk about stats um i would recommend getting the crafted gear you can see right now i've got the crafted boots this is like mandatory crafted item it's going to give you cc reduction on anything that you're playing uh and i opted to buy the conquest neck first and this is because you can enchant it with three gem sockets and this is going to be really important for you to realize when you're buying these gem sockets out of the auction house buy one of each color there's bronze silver and gold so buy one of each color and make sure you put them in bronze first silver second and gold last because if you put gold in first you're gonna have to buy two more gold ones and they're really expensive you don't want to do that so buy buy three of the colors um or if it's, it's cheaper on your auction house to buy two silvers than a bronze because i've seen that buy two silvers and one gold just make sure you put the lowest quality gem enchant or gem socket into it first before the high quality you're gonna waste fifteen thousand gold i just that tip alone made it worth watching this video trust me um for your neck and the main reason for that is because out of the vault you're gonna be wanting to pick tier pieces which is main set pieces so there's no real reason to buy those main set pieces i'm going to be aiming to get the world pvp weapon next week when there's enough trophies available rather than the conquest weapon and I'm just going to be buying jewelry and off pieces. Also because the jewelry is the pieces that you can enchant. And enchants are really expensive. So it's trying to save some gold and get some extra value. And I would hate buying a main set piece and then getting a tier piece um, in, inside of the vault. And then just being like, wow, I just wasted conquest. So I'm not going to feel bad about buying a neck um, because I get huge stat benefit of it. I get my best in slot gems right away. Uh, especially all the pieces that you can enchant that are not main set pieces. Um, so for balance to it specifically when we're looking at gear... I'm focusing on haste and versatility. Oddly enough, my mastery is actually higher. I don't know how that's possible because I'm actually deliberately trying to get um, more haste at the moment. You can see that with the haste versatility gems. Very similar um, to Shadowlands in that regard. We want versatility for defense and damage, haste for just global cooldowns, casting, and general maintenance um, of our class overall. We've got versatility enchants on the ring. I think it's going to be important. Main stat enchants. I got the cheaper version because it's blue gear and it's not going to be lasting very long. Uh, main stat enchants uh, onto our legs. 
legs and onto our chest just to try and get as much stat value as possible. Uh, on our main hand, we've got Wafting Writ, writ which is Haste Proc. Uh, this enchant's probably going to switch around a lot for me throughout the expansion. I've liked the Haste Proc. I really like Haste in general. Just makes everything speed up. Maintaining your dots, maintaining everything feels really good. But if I'm feeling like I'm really squishy, I may end up switching this to a versatility proc, especially if the meta just turns into uh, stay alive as long as you can. So take that into consideration when you're looking at the weapon enchant. And I have the Plain Runner's Breeze, which is a speed enchant on my boots, so I'm running a little bit faster than everybody. Uh, and that's pretty much it for enchants. Haste, versatility, um, focused around primary stat. If you can, haste and versatility are your best stats, um, if you can find them. And that's pretty much it for the stats, the talents, uh, for what we've been able to cover here so far. So let's get into some gameplay. Let's start looking at like what you're trying to achieve um, when it comes to Arena specifically. So a lot of balance stewards tell me all the time that it's really tough to survive. So in this video here, because uh, I know a lot of you probably newcomers to balance druid or maybe returning, is how do we survive when we're getting attacked um, by melee attackers? How do we deal with it? At the start of the fight, they don't actually start on me, I think. They start on my healer. Here we're going to use Solar Beam to interrupt the healer, root them, stun a kill target, drop our orbital strike, and that's going to have stellar flares on all targets. We're going to spam out Starfall, proc our star surges. Here's where we engine our car. We're going to Astro Communion, Fury of a Loon, use one charge of mushroom at a time. We use Astro Communion after we've tapped our Astro Power, and we want to use our um, um, the next generator immediately after we've tapped the next action bar of astral power but you can see the pressure like we got this ret warrior on the ropes like go back to shadowlands ret warrior go back to shadowlands absolutely crushing it um, with overall damage then when our astral power hits zero we can see fury of a loon rolling that's getting us more astral power we can chain our wild mushrooms at this point to make sure that we got three dots on every target here we try and go for a bash and a casted spell and this is where you know we're down at half hp our burst is over now we're going to need to start to kite so i use my next route onto the dps try and hold them back for a moment uh, and we can start using these balls on the ground from our star falls which are super fun starburst to knock enemies up allows us to knock the healer off the side reposition we get a blessing of protection we're going to go to the opposite side of the map away from the rep paladin always moving away from the enemy attackers whenever they're moved away and here we've got a choice we could jump off the side if we get attacked which will align the enemy healer uh, or we can just stand where we are if the enemy healer comes in it's is easy to crowd control we're going to solar beam the healer get our dots wild mushroom to burst during our cooldown window we get a fear on the healer we stun the rep paladin we've set them up we get divine shield immediately from that cross crowd control now we're going to jump off the side we can use wild charge to jump back up and away from the enemy attackers if they follow us and we're just kind of waiting to see if they're committed to us or not it doesn't look like they are so we can play next to the gateway the main reason you want to be playing next to the gateway uh, is to escape from enemy cooldowns or when your healer is crowd controlled so we're going to knock the rep we're going to go after the warrior here as he's chasing our paladin possibly look for cyclones because our paladin is so low health that's <laughs> so low health i'm surprised he survived uh here we get spell reflected which isn't a big deal because our paladin's bubbled immune to damage and now we're basically bubbled immune to damage but you do want to be aware of spell reflect uh, as it can be detrimental during key moments here we're going to bash dream projection really important to interrupt dream projection against a preservation evoker it's one of their biggest heals run some star bursts into the preservation just a AOE down the whole team, massive burst damage. We got Solar Beam, we've got Fury of a Loon, we got Astral Communion, and Orbital Strike. So we've got that big one tap of damage. We're gonna pop that over here onto the Warrior, Starfall to proc a free Star Surge. We can repower our engine with Astral Communion here uh, at any moment. We knock the Warrior off the side, repower our engine, Starfall, Star Surge proc, Starfall, Solar Beam the Healer on cast. We see a lot of little balls to pick up for Star Burst. Run those into the Rep Paladin, run those into the Warrior, get as much damage, proc Full Moon. Oh, Evoker died, triple kill easy number one victory uh, for our damage while we're getting attacked and you can see top damage I don't know why everybody's telling me balance Street is so terrible everybody's trying to jump on the, the hate bandwagon or something but I've really been enjoying uh, balance Druid at the moment. There are some classes that are tough to deal with. Shadow Priest, Warlock, the self-healing is just really high on those classes. I think everybody's struggling with them. Um, but maybe there's going to be more ba balance tuning. <laughs> balance tuning. Uh, coming forward, uh, that might alleviate those problems because otherwise it's, it's, it's so much fun. A superb spec. I really love the mergers of different expansions together. Been having a great time with it. I hope that you got some important information out of this video. If you want to stay up to date with stuff like this, make sure you hit the subscribe button. I'm going to be covering every single specialization. My experience with them on my challenge of getting 2400 in solo queue on every spec i know uh insanity uh right there and you can follow all of that action on my stream in the description down below recommend checking out my discord as well because that's where i'll be posting talent updates whenever i'm playing talents and you don't know what they are maybe they've changed they'll always be up to date in my discord on the pinned messages and you can ask me questions in the discord that's where my videos will be linked so you never miss a video either in case you just don't happen to be on youtube that day so definitely a great re trying to be a great resource for you overall so thank you very much for watching 
watching and I will catch you in the next one.